Let's get you some bait. Hi guys. Well, I'm getting to spend uh, today literally on lockdown uh, inside the house today here on uh, Friday, April 10th, 2020. The surveyors are outside figuring out how likely my house is to wash away in the floodplain. Uh, and they have told me I am not allowed to walk outside with them uh, as long as they're on my property. So anyway, the little dog and I are trapped inside. Oh yes, this is, uh, this is Coronavirus Chronicles. Uh, and my name is Sam Mitchell. This is my, not very, fe feeling good, my little, my little uh, co-pilot, Sancho Panza, is not having a good day. I think he ate too much barbecue chicken. Did you eat too much that factory farm chicken or what? Anyway, wish Sancho Panza to get well quick. Uh, so anyway, I just uh, finished my... I guess it was kind of a combination collapse chronicle, uh, corona panic chronicle over there at Manga Bay this week. So now we're going to move into uh, looking at, we're actually going to draw some connections between the corona panic and overpopulation coming from this group. Uh, which I've mentioned before, called the Overpopulation Project, T-O-P, the Overpopulation Project. And uh, guys, I, 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 I'm going to put a little disclaimer, disclaimer, amplification and clarification and disclaimer. Before I start this, it's going to get into talking about how this particular pandemic uh, was you know, came from the bushmeat trade, be it bats or pangolins or something. Uh, I know that more and more people, and I'm beginning to be one of them, uh, is beginning to figure out that this uh, latest pandemic uh, was accidentally released from a lab doing uh, research. Uh, we'll leave it uh, at that. What kind of research uh, at a lab in Wuhan, China? But it, but what it was was research on these bats that lived out in these very remote caves. So even though you might not agree with the uh, theory that it came from the bushmeat trade, it's pretty much irrelevant to this story. So I'm hoping this entire thing that you're listening to this, you're going to say, no, no, it wasn't from, from the bushmeat trade. It was from the doing experiments on wild animals trade. What is the difference? Anyway, uh... What does the Population Project have to say? The disconcerting association between overpopulation and the corona panic crisis. <clears throat> this week we reprint an article by Professor Alan Tell, published in the Times of Israel on March 25th, on the connection between overpopulation and the corona panic. Professor Tal explains the relationship between population density, human encroachment into natural areas, and disease transmission, and also the situation in Israel, a densely populated country. The text, however, is relevant for many other places. More than 15 countries have even higher population densities than Israel. And India is almost as densely populated. Moreover, there are hundreds of overcrowded megacities around the world of relevance to this text. Okay, so take it away, Professor Alan Tail. <clears throat> 
overcrowding and population density are indirect factors in any pandemic's reach and they are as important to its impact as its pathology. <clears throat> On morning runs inside Maudeen during the past year or two, I have encountered wild boars, jackals, turtles, and hedgehogs. After 20 years of running these same trails, it's a new experience. More and more Israeli communities find themselves in direct contact with wild animals whose habitat is usurped by humans. They simply have no place else to go. When the surrounding hyena population discovered the ample food supply in Modin garbage cans, they became an exciting attraction for our otherwise sleepy bedroom town, notwithstanding the thrill in seeing wild animals up close, it does not bode well. <clears throat> we all have a clear notion, again guys, here we go, some of us have a clear notion of how the present virus epidemic unfolded and its proximate causes, the zoonotic nature of the virus is widely accepted, so it doesn't matter whether it came from a seafood, uh, I mean from a bushmeat market or a, a lab, it jumped from one species to another, either from pangolins to humans or from bats to humans, uh, more likely the bats, but no one will ever know. Uh, the zoonotic nature of this virus is widely accepted. The social mechanisms of the illness's rapid transmission are also well understood, but it seems that we have not yet really apprehended the role that overcrowding and population density play as critical indirect drivers in pandemic pathology. There are two main factors at play here. The first is that an increasingly crowded world is witnessing outbreaks of zoonotic viruses with growing frequency. The rate of infectious disease epidemics has quadrupled over the past 50 years. Based on the locations of these viral hotspots, the new dynamics are often attributed to the steady encroachment by humans on wildlife habitat, or in uh, this latest case, by going out and bringing wild animals into the middle of a uh, disease-ridden wild animals into the middle of a city of 12 million people, be it a bush meat market or a lab. <clears throat> Experts confirm that the latest virus evolved in an animal host and then jumped over to infect people. This is the way several recent epidemics began, and of course many more coming up. If one considers the broader pathology, the present virus outbreak is part of an imbalance between human beings and our natural world. Recent pandemics emerged from East Asia and Africa, places where people increasingly come in contact with wildlife populations. There are grave implications, literally grave implications. That is why China recently decided to ban trade and consumption of wild animals, a welcome step for both public health and biodiversity protection. While China's population is finally starting to stabilize, the overall demographic patterns in the country are not changing. 
meaning they're still ripe for the next one of these things to come along. Hundreds of millions of people have joined an unprecedented rural to urban migration. Wuhan, where this virus plague began, is an example. In 1985, there were two and a half million people living in the city. Today, there are well over 11 million. As the city expanded and sprawled, natural lands gave way to human settlement. The surrounding region now suffers from acute deforestation. Those animals still surviving need to go somewhere as urban and suburban development <clears throat> proliferated interactions with humans increased and will continue to increase as more and more humans come onto this planet, uh, you know, moving in to the last most remote spots on the planet. Okay. The second way growing population density drives the, cor the uh, corona panic involves the way the virus is transmitted. Uh, he gets way too uh, technical here. Uh, blah, blah. I'm going to jump ahead if you believe in all of that technical jargon uh, aside. Many factors determining the, you know, the rate of infection are beyond our control. These include the infectiousness of the agent itself its incubation period, and the mode of transmission. One critical factor, however, is not built in you know, to the uh, disease biological. biologically. That is population density. When people live in dispersed rural environments, there is less human interaction and lower transmission. This is why I, I, I think that Tioga County, New York, where my house uh, there is, has had four cases of uh, this uh, pandemic has reached four people in all of Tioga County, while in New York City, what do we have? You know, Tioga County is probably ten times the, uh, uh, the size of New York City, but probably has the population density, I'm guessing, one one thousandth or less than that, probably one one millionth the population density. You, you know, what a surprise. Okay, <clears throat> this virus is transmitted via airborne droplets. People must be near someone already infected to catch the virus. Reducing the effective population density in public meeting places is the basic rationale behind the quarantine strategy favored by most con countries responding to the outbreak. But as more and more people live in crowded cities, it becomes harder to control a pathogen that takes days to manifest. These two demographic factors influencing epidemic dynamics, human encroachment on wildlife habitat, and denser living conditions are especially germane in Israel. This, this, this is one example. For decades, we have hemorrhaged open spaces with human settlement supplanting habitat and farmlands. Recently, Israel's ecological agency published their biannual State of Nature report. Among its conclusions, quote, the rate of land cover conversion uh, between 2014 and 2017 
was the highest in the last 20 years. Imagine that. Even counting the Negev Desert, Israel is among the world's most densely populated countries. Population momentum will probably double our numbers during the next 30 years. For those who rely on public transportation, enjoy cultural events, and utilize public venues, physical proximity to other people will increase. There will be even greater demands on our overrun hospitals. Already, today, large Israeli families confined to small apartments are finding it very hard to respect quarantine restrictions. This challenge will also grow harder. In short, we can expect our country, in short, we can expect our planet to become ever more vulnerable should pandemic dynamics arise in the future. Unfortunately, it is likely that they will. This is a time when economist Milton Friedman's observation is frequently quoted, only a crisis, actual or perceived, perceived, only a crisis, actual or perceived, produces real change. When that crisis occurs, the actions that are taken depend on the ideas that are lying around, close quote, thank you, Milton. When the corona panic subsides and Israel looks for lessons, adopting a strategy to stabilize the population is an important idea that needs to be on the table. Let me tell you, Elon, you know damn well uh, where stabilize, stabilizing the population is going to be an important idea that needs to be on the table in Israel or anywhere else once this, pan, uh, this uh, corona panic uh, subsides and we get back to whatever it's going to look like uh, on the other side of this. Well, let, let me tell you where uh, popu stabilizing the population, it's going to be nowhere on any table. This uh, whole corona panic uh, ha has driven home the last nail in the coffin about discussions about overpopulation. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, anyway, I'm just going to leave it at that, not go off on my own rant. So who is this guy? Professor Alan Tal is the chair of the Tel Aviv University Department of Public po Policy and a veteran environmental activist. Tal is the author of The Land is Full, Addressing Overpopulation in Israel. Yes, and uh, we don't even need to start talking about the Gaza Strip. Uh, good Lord, don't get me going. Uh, you know, when Alan Wiseman was doing his book about overpopulation, uh, starting out in the Gaza Strip, which is a little strip that makes sub-Saharan Africa look uh, downright uh, bucolic and serene. That uh, I, I can only imagine what uh, the corona panic how it's unfolding in the Gaza Strip today. I haven't heard, I haven't seen one article on the Gaza Strip. If anybody can send me a link to what the Gaza Strip looks like today, I would like that. So anyway, if you enjoyed what Professor Tal 
had to say, please spend a few moments to thumb up this video and please subscribe to the Coronavirus Chronicles uh, while you're over here. And with that, I gotta wrap this up and check out how, okay, the surveyors are, they finished the front corners of my house. Anyway, I guess they're trying to figure out how likely my house is to go underwater in the hurricane season of 2020. Okay, I don't have enough stress. Uh, one more year of my uninsured house in a floodplain in Texas waiting for the hurricane season 2020. It ought to be a doozy. Bye, guys.